is nearly at an end, so it's time to say farewell to another eventful 12 months. Here and abroad, our current affair crews witnessed and recorded the remarkable events that have shaped 2011, beginning with one of the worst natural disasters in our history. Amazing. Well, the flash flooding that ripped through the streets of Toowoomba was deadly and dramatic. It was horrifying. It hit without warning and would become the biggest story of the year. I've never experienced a tsunami, but if that's a tsunami, I don't want to be part of it again. You can hear the kids in the house screaming. Save me, help us. His mother and her partner. They didn't make it out. The house collapsed around them. People just killed three kids on the roofs and they were swept away to die themselves. I'm so sorry. Such tragic tragedy is around you. It's hard to imagine how the how the community could actually recover from this. There's, there's nothing left. It's all gone. The town's gone. An hour later and the city of Ipswich has just been given some devastating news. A revised river peak of between 18 and 19 metres. By Thursday afternoon, uh, there's going to be a huge amount of water across uh, Brisbane's metropolitan area. It's engulfing streets, homes, businesses, whole suburbs. I just never imagined I would see anything like this. This is my hometown transformed, and, and not transformed for the better, and, and on the verge of an even worse catastrophe than we're looking at. As we weep for what we have lost, and as we grieve for family and friends, and we confront the challenge that is before us, I want us to remember who we are. We are Queenslanders. That's unbelievable. It's just, I don't know, yeah. I can't, I can't describe it. This weather may break our hearts, and it is doing that, but it will not break our will. It's an eerie feeling floating around backyards in a boat. We've already been over garden sheds, back fences, cars, who knows what. Hey, you going, Lala? Good to see you again. How are you going? I'm battling long. But after the rain came the sun and that famous Aussie spirit of getting in and helping a mate. There's nothing like being in your hometown and seeing places you took for granted, you know, turned into lakes and rivers and then seeing people you know coming out to clean up and I'm really proud of how they're going about it. After one disaster came another. There was no escape for Tully. The cyclone thundered into this tiny community and pummeled the 3,000 residents for almost six hours. I've never, ever been so scared in my life. Can't believe it. It's just like an atomic bomb's gone off. What were your impressions from the air? What have you seen that, that shocked you? Looks like a war zone. This is what the people of Tully woke up to find in the middle of their main street this morning. This is the house that my father grew up in and, and I don't have a home. Beautiful resort of Dunk Island um, really did suffer the full force of Cyclone Yazi. Hello and welcome to this special edition of A Current Affair coming to you live tonight from Christchurch. The earth continued to shake as we reported on some of New Zealand's darkest days. The building was like a spring and it was bouncing. Like, there's one. Sorry. Well, there's probably no worse sight in Christchurch at the moment than that pine gold building, a five or six storey structure that now stands probably about five or six metres tall that has just pancaked and you shudder to think how many people are trapped inside there. We were live on air when Armageddon hit Japan. Clearly the disaster is unfolding before us at the moment. 
People in this town just stood no chance. In some parts, the raging torrent was more than 20 metres deep. Now, this elevated point that we're on at the moment is in fact the area that people are supposed to gather in the event of a tsunami. But as you can see, all of this went underwater as well. When you've got a mental illness, you're not the only one that suffers. Everyone around you suffers. And stereo Troubled and Matthew one Newton one opened up to Tracy Grimshaw about his blast. demons. My biggest mistake was not knowing that I needed treatment as sooner than I did. What do you think was going to happen that day? I thought the rest of them would be jumping in. But that's why I like, picked him up and dropped him because I was scared. I was just wanted to defuse the situation. It was the shocking video that went viral. The moment Aussie schoolboy Casey Highness fought back. Casey told his heartbreaking story of bullying to a current affair. The interview was seen by the world's hottest pop star. How are you? Good to see you. We're going to do a handshake this time. Last time I was a pound. Yeah. Everybody give it up for this kid. I saw the video. It was pretty cool. Never say never! Superstar Lady Gaga dropped by to perform exclusively for a current affair. There ain't a reason you and me should be alone tonight, baby. We're all born this way, and it's through our differences that we're exactly the same. Your mantra to yourself should be, be brave, be courageous, and someday your uniqueness and your individuality will be what you love about yourself. But Natalie, why did you take all that money? From Centrelink cheats, to dodgy tradies ripping off little old ladies. I, I, don't, want, I don't want my face on TV. That's we it. expose them all. Just wanted to talk to you about sham marriages. We're from a current affair. I don't want to talk about Tom Steinford uncovered an underground network of sham marriages designed to help foreigners buy their way into Australia. No, because we're aware that you're offering $25,000 for a, no, a wife here in Australia. It's our place, we pay the rates, your low life. Get out! Sarah Stewart reported on squatters who'd overstayed their welcome. We are not a third world country. No family should have to be homeless. No family should have to be treated like this. We found Clarissa Hilbig and her five young children living in a tent because no one would rent them a home. What do you think about living here in the showground? I hate it because we don't. We, we don't like have to hate it. showers or baths. We got blankets. So. Does it get cold? Yes. <laughs> it's really cold. <laughs> up, up and away, my beautiful, my beautiful. <laughs> For the first time in 30 years, we got the cast of Young Talent Time back together. Okay, so who, who had a crush on who and who pashed who on the show? All right, I'll tell you now, I'll tell you, I had a crush on Karen. <laughs> Huge crush on Karen. You never pashed her. Never patched Karen. No, Jane. And they sounded as good as ever. And I'll send all my loving to you. Good night, Australia. <laughs> There'll be a good game. Brady Halls was there when a television institution celebrated 45 years of entertaining and educating our kids. Is he an original? I think he he's is. He's original. He's, he's the original. original. Yeah, he's, he's worth a few dollars, that old boy. Open wide, come inside. It's way school. Here were the Sullivans. The cast of Prisoner. You're all like the kingpin of the show, aren't you? No, I'm the top dog, top stupid. Dog. And Australia's favourite housemates. Hey! Sarah Stewart went bush to catch Crocs with little Robert Irwin. How on their feet, the underside of their foot, it's just so soft. They're, they're just amazing. And isn't he just like his old man? Okay. Awesome. Yes. Ah! So Tracy here, you can meet the boys. We've got Jane. And Tracy Grimshaw and met Tony and Brett, two gay dads with four oh, new yeah. baby boys. I'd say I'll do these things. I don't think it through. A fear of heights didn't stop funny woman Magda Sabansky climbing the Sydney Harbour Bridge to celebrate her 50th birthday. How can you get to 50 and have no idea you're this afraid of heights? I don't know. Well, 
I suppose I was too busy being fat to ever find out. Pip! Hey! Hey, Pip! One year on, Brady Hall's caught up with little Rima, her husband Carl, and their miracle baby, Osiris. Are doctors confident that there will be no height issues with Osiris? Yes, yes, yes. Um, he's actually ah. quite a tall baby. Um, and I think he's going to be like his father. So I'm going to have two ladders in the house and um, it will be a struggle to hide the cookie jar. So that's OK. <laughs> now within hours, the future King of England will marry the middle class girl, the very beautiful middle class girl, Catherine Middleton. We were there for William and Kate's big day, but for us, there was another wedding that was special. Bronte, the brave girl who fought anorexia all those years ago, tied the knot wow. with Nigel. Nigel, you may kiss your bride. At a current affair, we like to help where we can. This time, it was for Heidi. Left a quadriplegic after a tree fell on her car, we helped her build her dream home. Yeah! 